They cry out to the Lord for healing and the power of God to heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. The power of emotion that has so hurt our hearts at times or our relationships that have hurt us or past circumstances or that have hurt us, it can all be healed in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing too difficult for our God. He's able to heal the body. He's able to bring rejoicing to the soul. He is able to heal that broken heart that we have this morning. And He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask and all that we could ever think. And so, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning worshiping you in the name of Jesus, entering into the throne room of grace, asking for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, asking for the move of the Holy Spirit, asking for that which only you can provide for us, to us, in us, through us. And Lord God, we're going to give you the praise. Now let every heart be touched. Let every mind be touched. Let every person under the sound of our voice today, represented here by the human race, Father, let them be impacted by the power of the Holy Spirit, the flow of the Holy Spirit for which we have cried and asked for, and we believe we shall receive it today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, meet the needs of your people in this chapel service. We submit ourselves to you and allow God to have his way in Jesus' name, and everybody shouted, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. You ready to worship this morning?
His promises are sure. Hallelujah. What He said He'd do, He will do it. Come on, let's worship Him this morning. If you know Him and you love Him, just praise His holy name right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You. We thank You for Your goodness, Lord. We thank You for Your precious promises, Lord God. Your mercies, Lord, that fail not. Your kindness toward us. We need You, Lord, today. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
every chain of alcohol, every chain of drugs, every chain of pride, every hurt in the heart that can't be healed by human hands, every need, every emotion, the hurts in lives that we encounter just because life sometimes isn't fair. He can come when we invite him in. Jesus, praise. Tell somebody God loves you, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Once again, we will not. Once again, thank you, FCA, for making your way over here with us, and thank you for uh, Miss Carolyn and all the staff and every single one that has come. We certainly to our chapels. Uh, if you want to, if you're a junior or senior, you want to come over, participate in the classes, or want to see what's happening, check with Carolyn and we'll set up a time for you to come anytime you want to. You are certainly welcome. We are part of the same organization, uh, believing and marching in the same way as Family Worship Center, Jimmy Spider Ministries, and uh, we're glad to have you. Open your Bibles this morning, please, if you have them, to the Gospel of John. I'm still a little hot, if you would, Aaron, a little hot. Gospel of John. John chapter 1, and we'll start reading in verse 14. I've ministered from this passage in the last couple of services that I've been in, one in Texas, another in Illinois, and it's still in my heart and my spirit couldn't shake it for today. So we'll head there again. John chapter 1, verse 14. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, This was He of whom... I spake, he that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. 
Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And I want to minister a message just simply entitled, The Word. The Word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to proclaim your word. We'd ask now that the teacher would come, the preacher would come, the one that makes teaching and preaching easy. And lead us and guide us into all that is being said to meet the needs of the people that are here, the students, the staff, the guests. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. In verse 14, and I doubt that I'll get much beyond that today, but in verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh. The Word is a symbol pointing to the man, Christ Jesus. And we'll prove that to you in just a moment. Because he is the Word of God, Jesus. He is the living word. He is the written word. He is all that this Bible is all about. And in fact, John is written to convince men and women, boys and girls, that Jesus was the Son of God. And that knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God is what brings about salvation. But it can't be just a head knowledge to where we acknowledge him as the historical figure. We have to see our need as a human being for him as our savior. Right. All of us need grace and truth. Grace is the goodness of God given to undeserving people. It is all that God has available to give to humanity. But none of us can receive grace unless we first comprehend, accept, and receive the truth. Before you can get all that God has, you have to know the truth. You have to know the truth about yourself. You have to know the truth about the Word. You have to know the truth about God's redemption plan. And you have to say it is as God says it is. We have to acquiesce to the truth. And the truth is found in Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But truth has to be acknowledged. Truth has to be received. Truth has to be embraced. It can't just be something that we, oh yeah, I agree with that. When I was a kid, I was raised up in a church and I knew the gospel story. I knew, I knew the word. I, I went to church Wednesday night and I went to church Friday night for youth group and sound Sunday morning. I went to Sunday school and Sunday morning service and Sunday night service. I started singing in churches when I was six years old and I could tell you the gospel story. And I said yes to it in my brain. I said, yes, it is what the Bible says it is. I didn't argue with it. And I thought because I said yes in my mind to that historical Jesus, that that's what saved me. Just saying yes to historical Jesus. But what I didn't realize is that I was not allowing him to become a part of my life. I was just saying yes to a religious thought pattern. I, and when I left church, it never affected me. And that relationship that I had supposedly with God never affected me at all when I left the church. It was just what I did. It was like going to school. And when I left school, I stopped going to school. When I left the church, I never thought about it anymore. And I really didn't know that... I wasn't saved. I wasn't born again. I'd never experienced the supernatural transformation that comes when somebody accepts the truth of God's word and sees themselves as they need to see. It's not just the acceptance of an historical Jesus, but rather the acceptance of the truth that all men are sinners and that all of us are born in sin. Oh, we can have some good in us, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but that doesn't save us. And grace is, again, what we don't earn, what we don't deserve, what we can't work for. So somehow I've got to get grace, but I can't get it by working for it. I can't get it because I earn it. If I want to really have a relationship with God, I can't 
labor for it. I can't uh, work hard enough to be acceptable. There's no point in time where I do enough good stuff that God accepts me because God is pure and holy. There has to be a complete righteousness for me to be accepted. And how shall I come to know that? How shall I arrive there? How can I possibly get to that stage where I'm acceptable to God? Well, the truth is man can't. In and of himself, man cannot produce salvation. The great word is so-so in the Greek. It means to save, to heal, to protect, to deliver. We can't save ourselves. We can't heal ourselves. We can't deliver ourselves. And we certainly can't change ourselves. There's a reason we are the way that we are on the inside. And it's because of the truth of our condition. And God saw the truth he knew. And the Bible says that he sent the word. The word. Well, what is the word? Well, by definition, if we look up to verses 1 through 5, again, I've told you it's by definition Jesus, but let's look at it. He says in John 1, 1 through 5, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So Jesus has always been the word. Jesus has always been with God. And Jesus is God. He is the son of the living God. He is God. He's a member of the triune Godhead. He, he always was this. Before he came to earth, he was God. And before he came to earth, he was with God. And what, before he came to earth, uh, he always existed in this condition. The Bible says in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. So Jesus is also not only God, Jesus is the creator. Right. Yeah. And in Colossians, the Bible says, not only is he the one that created all things, but for him were all things created. So I wasn't even as a created being, I wasn't even created for myself. Guess what? I was created by him and for him. Yeah. All right. So my life ought to be all about him and not just me. God doesn't withhold good things from his people. But there has to be a surrender to the one who created me. I have to acknowledge the fact that he is God and he created me and he created me for a purpose. And that purpose isn't necessarily my purpose. That purpose is his purpose. So he is the word. He is God. He is my creator. And in him is life, the Bible says. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is the Creator. Jesus is God. Jesus is the light. Jesus is life. Jesus is life. Yeah. Jesus is life. Yeah. He brings life out of death. We're living as a human being before we really come to know Christ, not just with head knowledge, but with heart knowledge. We're living in a darkness. We can't even see where we are at. We don't comprehend things spiritually. That's why when people talk about Jesus, we're able to make fun of him because he's not that important to us. It's because we're darkened. Our mind doesn't understand in its natural state the things of God. It's an impossibility for a non-saved person to understand the concepts of God. They don't have the equipment and they don't have the light. And here in verse 5 it says this, and it's so sad, it says, And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. We, we, but Jesus is always extending himself. God forever extended himself to the human race. But the human race was blind because of the fall and couldn't get the knowledge of God, separated from God by sin. They couldn't comprehend who God was, but the light continued to shine out and shine out and shine out. And God wouldn't stop sending the light, but the human race couldn't comprehend it. They couldn't grasp it. And even when it showed up, they would reject it. He was the Word, He was the life, He was the light, He was the Creator. And when He came and His light shined, the darkness in humanity, in the mind, in the heart, and the spirit said, Oh no, I want to live life my way. I want to do things my way. 
and life and light rejected and the word rejected is truth rejected and is God's grace rejected. Let me say that again. Truth rejected, light rejected. Just saying, no, I don't want to give my heart to Jesus is rejecting the light. Let me be clear. Let me be plain. Not serving him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your being is rejecting the light. Just letting him in a little bit. That's still rejecting the light because the light wants to shine in all of our darkness. And remove it stage by stage, little by little. There's no perfect Christians, but we're on a journey, thank God. I said, we're on a journey, thank God. And he's transforming us that will submit to the truth by his grace. But you can't even see the light unless you be born again, unless you accept him by faith, unless you come to the end of yourself and acknowledge, I don't see him, I, I don't know him, I, I know about him, but I don't know him. That's what I learned when I was 26 as a drug addict. And an alcoholic, a former guy that was in church all of my life, and then got away from the church because it was head knowledge, it wasn't in my heart. And when I learned that he was for real, and I saw the light, and it shined into my darkness, I accepted it. God took me to a breaking point, and I pray, I trust, and I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice doesn't have to go through what I went through. I wish that uh, I wish that I had Bob Cornell's testimony. He gave himself his heart to the Lord when he was five years old how much further along could I be now if I wouldn't have wasted 20 years walking in darkness I couldn't comprehend the light I didn't see the light I didn't understand it and God knew that men needed to understand what he was all about and so he did something miraculous and the word Jesus, the creator, the life, the light, was made flesh. Yes. Glory to God. Now we need to understand that. Flesh simply talks about the creation of God in man. You know, the first creation was made perfectly, Adam and Eve. Perfect. They had a mind, they had a soul, they had a spirit. They had free will because God was going to train his highest creation, what life was all about. Their minds were magnificent. Adam was so smart. He named every animal, and he named it after the attribute that we still call it today. Men in darkness, we use 10, 15, maybe, 20% of our brain, maybe, because we're in darkness. Adam was brilliant. There was no sin. There was no darkness. There was no sin. And every day God walked with his highest creation. And he wanted to impart himself to this highest creation and train them, created in the image of God, Adam and Eve, to train them to be like him, to walk like him, to think like him. That was the goal. And he just said one thing. Whatever you do, here's what I don't want you to do. Don't go eat in the knowledge of tree of good and evil. Why would he say that? Well, first of all, there's a thought here. God is the one that should be telling us what is good and what is evil. Yeah. We shouldn't be relying upon ourselves to determine good and evil. Are you kidding me? We're so confused today. We don't even know what bathroom to go into. Right. Yeah. 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 Darkness. Darkness. And I'm going to ask another human being what's good and what's not, what's good and what's bad. Well, back there, God was ready, willing, and ready to train the mind, the heart, the spirit, the soul of mankind into being like him. He created man in his image, and he wants to extend that image, and he only gave him one test. And here what it really well, here's the basics of it. I just want you to depend on me. I'll teach you what's good and right's wrong. I'll fill your heart. I'll fill your mind. I'll fill everything that you are. And I'll fill your mind. I'll fill your spirit. I'll fill your soul. There was no sin in that flesh that was created until Adam and Eve decided we don't want to rely on God. We'll go take of the tree. 
I won't go into the details. Eve was deceived, Adam was not. But the result was sin entered the world. Sin. Not light, darkness. They lived in nothing but the glory of God, the light of God, Adam and Eve. But now sin enters. And with the presence of sin comes a nature that is sinful, bent towards self, bent towards ungodliness. And while they didn't die physically in the moment that they sinned, they died spiritually. They became dead to God and they came alive to sin. And sin began to train them. Sin began to influence the sin nature is, 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 is a, it's, it's a nature. It's what influences you. If you have a happy nature, it just simply means that most of the time you're happy-go-lucky people, so you're smiling. You're influenced in your heart, your soul, your spirit, your mind by your nature. Or, or you, you, maybe you're shy and you, and you don't talk in front of people very well. That's your nature and it influences your decisions and how you talk and whether you do or you're not. And it's a, it's a nature. But mankind, when they chose to disobey God, became dead to God and alive to a sin nature. And the sin nature began to train them in sin until their mind grasped nothing but sin, till their heart was full of sinful activity. And in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, the Bible says some 1,600 years later, the thoughts of men and women were on evil continuously. That's all they had because they were dead to, God, dead to God and they were alive to sin. And sin was flowing into them and it created a creation that couldn't see. That couldn't comprehend spiritual truth. That didn't know who God was. They made up their own versions of God like religions do today. In all of this, God had witnesses, had light. But men didn't see the light because now this creation of God that once bore the image of God was little by little losing the entire image of God. Well, there's still a little image of God left in every one of us, even those that aren't saved. That's why bad people can still do good things. That doesn't mean they're right with God. That means bad people do some good things. That doesn't mean that we're okay with God just because I do a couple of good things. That's evidence that I have a conscience and that I was created in the image of God and some resemblance of that creation still exists in me today. But that's not what I am because I've been trained by the sin nature. And then society begins and everybody in it is trained by the sin nature and we create a society that doesn't want God. And so now we have the world system and all that is in it is primarily all about man and not about the Lord. And on top of that, you have powers of darkness that influence and tempt and lead. And into the darkness of men's dilemma. into the darkened soul and spirit and mind and darkness of men, into the society that didn't apprehend and comprehend or want God, dominated by the God of this world, Satan. God sends the word. Yes. Yeah. God sends the the word Hallelujah. and the word was made flesh now he's not sinful flesh like you and i that's what romans 8 3 talks about this creation that lost the image of god we are sinful flesh created in the image of god but now bearing very little resemblance to him we look more like our father the devil who has trained us and taught us about sin and that's what we pursue we're not really interested in God. We're interested in myself. I did it my way. You kids don't know what that is. <laughs> We're interested in what I want. And I'm not interested in him because if I go to that religious place, if I go to Jesus, oh, I'll, I'll lose all joy. I'll lose all that. I'll, I have to give up everything I like. Let me tell you, everything you gave up won't be nothing compared to what you get. Amen. 
But into this world of darkness, dominated by sin, dominated by a ruined creation, God doesn't send sinful flesh. He sends perfect flesh. Yes. The second Adam, the last man, whose mind and whose heart is totally, beautifully in tune with God like ours was supposed to be. And he walks in the earth in this, in this, in this darkness and he becomes the light. He shows us what humanity could be and what humanity should be and how humanity could have a relationship with God. And he says, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it. I don't speak anything unless I hear my father say it. I'm in tune with the Lord. And so he perfectly for 33 and a half years, he examples God in perfect flesh unchanged, unadulterated, unmarked, unscathed flesh walks among us that are stuck in sinful flesh. And he says, come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. You're in the darkness. You don't know why sin. You don't know why you do the things you do. You don't know why you're doing what you're doing. You don't know why you're going where you're going. Thinking what you're thinking. Viewing what you're viewing. You don't know why you're with him like you are or her with in ways that are inappropriate. Society has trained us today that sex doesn't make any difference. We're training our kids to Go out and have sex because sex is just what men do. No, fallen men Please. go out and have sex. Come on, now. Men and women get married and raise a family. Amen. <laughs> but our society tries to train us and, and you have been inundated. I apologize for my generation which gave yeah. you the garbage you now look at and see. And it's the fault of our churches not telling the people what they should. We shouldn't be training you how to use condoms. We should be training you how to walk in abstinence and in the power and the glory of God. But society looks at me today and says, oh, you're a throwback. You're a, that's a, that make me, oh, that's not what we do. They're in darkness. They can't comprehend the things, but into the darkness. God sends the light. Hallelujah. For the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And watch. And we beheld His glory, the glory of God, the presence of God. He comes in and He reveals to us what purity is, what holiness is, what righteousness is by His example. And Christians, that's what we need to be. We're working on that. All right. I'm not yet totally conformed into his image, no fair interviewing my wife or children or those close to me or those that I work with. I'm not finished yet. I am a believer though. And I have beheld the one who is perfect. The only one we can compare ourselves to is Christ. That's the only one we should ever compare ourselves to. Because he's the one that set the standard. He came as perfect flesh. The word made flesh. And we beheld his glory, his beauty, his presence. Which represented God to all of humanity. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. You can't believe in Jesus and not believe his word. He said that men don't come to the light because their deeds are sinful. And because we don't want him, because we think it will interrupt our sinful activity. That's why we reject him. Men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. That's what Jesus said. But he comes to us and he offers us a solution and he says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the light. You see that? I'm the light. I'm the word. I'm the, light. I'm the perfect one. Come to me and I will give you life that you don't have. Come on, Amen. I will produce in you what you can't produce in yourself. I'll free you from the chains of sin. Thank you. From every bondage, from every website you shouldn't see. 
from every action that you shouldn't. He'll take away the want to. He'll forgive us of the failure, wipe away the stain, and take away the desire. And he says, come unto me. Why? Because I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the truth. Jesus is the only way of salvation. And the only way of salvation is to acknowledge what I am. I'm man living in darkness. I can't see. I can't get out of where I'm at. I can't move. I can't. I'm in bondage. I can't change what I am. Well, there's a part of us that when that happens, when that invitation is given, that resists it. But when Jesus is knocking at your heart's door, you feel it right here. All right. You'll feel it. You'll know, oh, he's drawing me. That's the light. Thank you, yeah. The light coming to the heart and the mind that's in darkness saying, come to me. I want you with me. I have life for you. I'm the creator. I'm life. I'm where I give it all to you. But I want you to come with me. You're going to have to make a decision now to leave where you are and place your faith in me and not in yourself and who you are and what you do. You're going to have to come to me because I'm the truth. And when you come to the truth, you find Grace. Amen. Yeah. And grace doesn't let us remain the same. Grace is not mercy. It's a different aspect of God. Grace is the ability of God. You want to know how to change some of the things you're changing? Only by the grace of God. Jesus has the power to change us. We don't have the power to change ourselves. Right. He is full of truth but he's also full of grace, which means that as I learn this process of living, I come to him, first of all, the life, the light, the word, and my sinful condition, and I say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin and come into my heart. And you know what the Bible says? He'll never turn one away. He is the life. He is the light. He is the Savior of the world, the one and only Son of God who gave himself on Calvary to pay the price. He in his perfect flesh gave himself as a sin offering for my sinful flesh, for me. And he says, if you come to me, I'll do two things. Number one, I'll forgive every sin you've ever committed. Every stain will be washed away and taken away. But you know, the best thing about Christianity is getting saved only takes a moment. And, and listen, you can't get saved and stay the same. That's right. Yeah. Because it's not just walking down an aisle or shaking the preacher's hand. Getting saved means that the grace of God has released the power of the Spirit of God at redemption into you. He literally recreates us. He recreates the mind and the soul and the spirit. Now, he doesn't make it perfect. He sets it up to be perfected and then places his spirit on the inside of us. You'll be so changed through salvation, you can't stay the same. You won't want to stay the same. Right. And inside of you, through the person of the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking baptism with the Holy Spirit here. I'm talking about redemption. I'm talking about getting saved and being made a new creation. God comes and lives inside of you. And as you continue to depend upon him, he will change you into his image. He'll take out of you that ruined creation and place in you. He'll recreate you after the image of the one who originally created you. Yeah. After the one who came, the word, the flesh, the truth, the life. Yeah. He'll make you feel and sense and walk and think like he. Christianity is not just getting saved and it's a pass to heaven and a free pass to escape hell. It is, but that's not what Christianity is all about. Salvation is the entrance of something. It's the beginning of something. Because out of his being is not just truth. If I accept the truth, 
I also receive grace. And then when I get grace, I don't just need it one time. I need grace. Yeah. Yeah. Upon grace. Yeah. What's that? Power to change. Power to be changed. Power to renew my mind. Power to change my heart. Power to change my spirit. All these things that have been affected by the fall. He can change it. So little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, Christianity enters in by accepting the truth. And then of his fullness, we receive grace upon grace upon grace. Even when you blow it, he doesn't get tired of us. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. He's ready to receive us. But he asks one thing, that we recognize our need our condition and that we don't count on ourselves but we count forever on him that's why i pray him that's why i read the book to find out what it says about him not to make me a christian that's why i go to church it doesn't make me a christian only his truth but his truth is found in his word and only his grace can make me a Christian. Only his truth and only his grace. And you don't get it all at once. And that's what makes Christianity exciting. You say, well, I'm not too excited about that. Could be you're in darkness. Because if you're in the light of the word, of the life, of the Son of God, then you want darkness removed and the light given. That becomes the goal of our life. Becomes the predominant factor of what I am and where I'm headed and what I'm doing. I want out of the darkness and I want into the light. I want into the life. And out of his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace upon grace upon grace he never tires of attending to us and he won't throw us away when we fail he just asks that we admit our failure admit our need and look to him as both the forgiver of our sin and the one that furnishes us with grace to keep moving i don't lose my salvation every time i fail thank god for that I said, thank God yeah. for that. Amen. I'd be bouncing in and out of salvation. Me too. Yeah. All right. But if my faith remains in who he is and what he's done, then this word that was made flesh has reached me with his light. And I've accepted the light. I've seen that my deeds are evil and I needed me to come to the light. I accept the truth and I begin the reception of grace and I'm born again and then after I'm born again I need grace upon grace upon grace upon grace and I look to him for that because he's the only one that can supply it. I don't earn it because the law can never provide what I need. I place my faith in him. He works in me. And because he's working in me, I change. Because my faith is in him, I am being changed. And you see somebody different. You see somebody talking different, living different, walking different. Because of his fullness, I've received grace for grace. What we need today is twofold. We need the truth. We need his grace. It comes through Christ. Singers and musicians come. But we have to acquiesce our need. We have to acquiesce to the truth. If you want grace, you have to accept the truth of your present condition. And it doesn't matter if you're a Bible college student, saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. You still have need of grace upon grace upon grace. Or you came here this day and you know that you have a head knowledge, but you don't really have a personal knowledge because you can't stay the same when you really come to know Christ Jesus 
That born again experience is so powerful, it won't let you stay the same. And for those of us that are in that situation, then the light is reaching out to our darkness, saying, I'm ready. Are you? I'm ready. Are you? We just stand up for this morning. I don't know what the need of your heart is, what the need of your life is. Is every head bowed, every eye closed? I certainly can't save, and none of the professors here, or staff at FCA, can save you. We can't. All we can do is point you to the light. Who is the light? Who is the light? Who is Christ Jesus? And He is able to meet every need based on the truth out of the grace that is in Him. If you're here this morning and you'd say, Brother Larson, I need to begin this Christian journey. I need to start it. And as you were talking, I realized that I'm in darkness. I'm not in the light. I need to accept Christ as my Savior. I want to begin. If that's you this morning, without worrying about your buddies or your friends, and you're here wherever that may be, just, you need prayer. You want to get started in this Christian journey. You need his first implant of grace into your life. Where you are, just raise your hand up. Say, pray for me. I see that hand. See those hands. Pray for me. Don't worry about anybody else. When you stand before God, it's just going to be you and him. Pray for me. I need to really, I need to get my heart right. I need to get my heart right. Christians pray, let the Spirit of God, light is reaching out into darkness, what will you do to it? Will you accept it? Will you receive the light today? Those hands came up. They're saying, I want to receive Christ Jesus as my Savior, my Lord. And He's about to do something in you that has never been done before. He's going to transform you by the grace of God through the truth of the truth is going to bring you grace today. It's going to be changed. Things are going to be different. Right where you are, he's done it for millions. He'll do it for you. Light is reaching out to the darkness. And some are saying, yes, I need him. I want him. I desire him. Give me that light, Lord. And that's all he's been waiting for you to say. I'm going to ask you to say, pray a simple prayer with me. And it's not a prayer that saves us or changes us, but it's a prayer that expressed from the heart brings us into relationship with God. To be honest with you, many of you already raising that hand have said yes. But I'm just going to help you with this and I'm going to ask everyone in here to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I'm sorry for the way I live and the things I've done. Please forgive me. Right now, I come to the light. I come to the light. I come to the truth. I come to Jesus. I ask him to forgive me of my sin and wash me clean. I invite him into my heart to make me a new creation. I surrender my life and I ask for grace to be transformed into the person that he wants me to be. And according to the word of God, my faith expressed in Christ has brought to me the salvation of the Lord. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Now, Lord, let your grace flow into that heart, into that life right now. Father, let the Spirit of God flow like a river right now and confirm that prayer being answered. Let it flow right now in Jesus' name. Let the flower of God flow right now. Lord, there's believers here that 
They've been saved. They've been born again, but they need grace upon grace right now. They need the Holy Spirit to come in and fix something. There needs to be a change in their demeanor, a change in their heart, and a change in their life, a change in what they thought. And I want to invite you this morning, before we leave from this place, if you just pray that prayer, or you have a need, and you need grace upon grace, you need grace out of the fullness of the truth, you can have it. I'm going to ask you to just step out from where you are worshiping. Come down to this altar for a few minutes, and let us worship together. Let us open up our hearts and receive the grace that we need for the next step in our journey. Come on just now. Come on just now. Let's worship. You from FCA, step out if you want to. Come down to this altar. Let us pray with you. God's got something for you today. Whether you just pray that prayer or you're a Christian that needs a touch from God, come on. Might as well. You're in the hospital of the Holy Ghost. This is where he does the work. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be ashamed of Christ. He's not ashamed of you. He's ready to give you grace upon grace. Out of this fullness, out of this truth, out of this fullness and out of this truth is going to come to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, fix that which is in me. That's it. Come on, don't be ashamed. We want you here. We want you here. Oh, hallelujah. I need some of you that are praying to come over here and stand with us today. Stand with me.
FCA is going to have to head back over as they do. We don't close out our service by a dismissal. We just let people cry out to God, stand in the altar to let them move as they would. And again, uh, for the staff of FCA, I'm not sure how you desire or design to move everybody, but you're welcome to stay with us when you're ready to go. Staff, then I'll let you just direct them as you see fit uh, to head them back over. I want to say thank you for those that have come today, and then we're going to go back to worshiping. I want to say thank you for the staff of FCA. You've got some fantastic young people on your hands, and I think you know that. And we'd love to help you in any way, shape, fashion, or form. You're always welcome to join us. Uh, we're having church here Wednesday and Friday. We'd love to have you. But you just need a right relationship with Christ Jesus. You can have that all by yourself. You don't need Brother Larson or Pastor Gabe or anybody else. You can have it yourself with Christ Jesus. But we can help you in that relationship, help you learn how to walk, help you learn how to experience the fullness of Christ. That's what we want to do. That's why we're here. And you can have that. So don't sell yourself short. And it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. I wish I'd have started when I was some of your ages. Hadn't I wasted all that time. So thank you for coming. We're going to continue to worship. We're going to continue to praise. And I'll leave the leaving up to the FCA staff. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Every heart that was surrendered to you, every life that was surrendered to you, we give you praise now, Lord. We give you glory. And Father, we ask that whatever was planted into the hearts and in the minds, that you would cause it to bring forth not 30, not 50, but Father, 100-fold. Bring it to 100-fold return. Every seed that was planted, every reaction, every thought birthed in them by the Holy Spirit, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.